there's a very good chance that if you are currently driving your traffic to the product page or the collection pages, you should reconsider that. And this may not be the most efficient strategy overall for you because it's what everyone else does. And generally speaking, guiding people to collections or product pages is for those people that already have uh, some superior angle that is obvious. So they have a great price, they have a product superiority that doesn't need explaining. And you need people that are very pain aware for this particular approach to work where you get them straight to the page. And usually they are likely already having one solution to their problems. So you would have to explain why you would be a better option than the current one. So sort of like break their reality a little bit. And in one of my previous videos, I went over explanation funnels. But sometimes the product is just not that complicated to warrant an explanation funnel. So today, we're going to look at what's called content funnels or listicle funnels, where we'll be able to explain things a little bit simpler and is more straightforward and very good uh, funnel for people that uh, don't have anything groundbreaking but are doing a little twist to what uh, existing solutions are offering. But before we do that, if you don't know me yet, I'm Samuel Larson, founder of ZeroGurus.com. We regularly help seven and eight figure e-commerce stores get the most out of their existing e-commerce traffic with the conversion and average value, value optimization. So with that said, we have a lot of experience from different funnels. We've seen what works and what doesn't from uh, having a dozen to two dozen clients at any given moment. So we understand our things and uh, here I'm going to share a lot of these learnings on this YouTube channel. So if you haven't yet liked the video and subscribe to the channel, do so now so you don't miss out on it. And with that said, let's jump into the practical part of the video. Now to help uh, land you into these pages, I would uh, advise you to think through from uh, your own perspective, because we all understand deodorants. We understand like books, they're not that complicated. And uh, most people buying blue light glasses, they're already aware of the pain so you may not need to like go and explain it that much so look at it from this perspective that these are already fairly simple products and they're just using a pre-sale funnel to help get a little bit more choice out of these ads with that said let's jump into the screen share and welcome to screen share that was quick here we have our first funnel desktop on the right mobile on the left and i loved looking at this side by side to kind of give you also a little bit of a perspective of uh, how the devices might differ in how they are looking right now. And obviously there's going to be quite a bit of focus on mobile as that is the main device of the day. And if you think of how people actually arrive to these pages, many of them will be reading something on mobile and then see an ad, click on that and end up with this kind of page. So it is very likely to be way more mobile than it is desktop. Now let's start from the top here. So smell good and get 15% off. This might be one of those little bit like desperation moves. If we don't lead with the discount, then people are not going to stick around and learn about our product. I think that might be the underlying fear there that is uh, causing this. And then secondly, free shipping starts at $35 and free returns. So they're also leading with this. However, if you think of a uh, deodorant purchase, this. Uh, might be quite a high value purchase for many people. So it may actually be a turn off to talk about pricing before you have talked about the benefits of the product. So these kinds of things might make people a little bit uh, skeptical unnecessarily. So something to consider when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to the actual banner, it's unlikely that uh, you have many solutions that would fail both on mobile and desktop. I think this is the one that does that well though. So you have this uh, random picture that uh, you would never have in front of a news article, for example, a banner like this. It doesn't really add any kind of value, it just uh, shows the product. You could have shown it later and it doesn't do a good job about showing the product. So I think it's very much a missed opportunity there. Also, if you think of this as uh, something that uh, is now kind of squeezed between all of these other messages. It's uh, unlikely to be read because you have eyes going to the video background and uh, that's going to cause an issue. Okay, six reasons people are switching to this clean deodorant. You probably have a little bit more of an idea of the target audience rather than just people. 
and it looks like these are for men so why not uh, and like state that at least let's scroll out uh, okay so obviously it's going to be kind of like this alpha macho male type of uh, approach here so hard working protection they went very scientific here very early so talking about uh, these different uh, complicated uh, things and already people have no context about this and now you're asking them to read complicated texts so this is probably where a lot of people check out and you can have this definitely on the page but most likely the place for that would be a little bit later when you have more understanding from people they know the core of things and that's uh, probably not uh, a very good thing to lead with okay next it glides so smooth probably not a pain point from before that uh, this uh, previous one didn't glide so well here is probably the first one they, they could have uh, actually led with so you had this that has been tested by the toughest mofos around the first differentiator for this kind of product okay next uh, your shirt is not a diaper so you have a pain point here actually that uh, some deodorants might lead out uh, these stains so again one of the better ones they just didn't lead with the best ones so that's probably where this funnel is uh, failing the top of the page is actually way worse than the bottom of it and then rest of it uh, doesn't matter all that much so it smells good five percent and then there's some uh, random testimonials that uh, are highly unbelievable because there's not even any kind of uh, real proof around it it's misaligned and a uh, bunch of issues here so not the best of funnels in my view at least there's uh, then a call to action to test the product and that goes to probably the product page here we go with uh, quite a terrible email pop-up that uh, it's very difficult to read here then yeah they also have a lot of reviews so this actually is something social proof was completely missing from the previous page except the testers and then you have the message that has changed as well so not overly impressed by this one just uh, gives you an idea of this kind of funnel approach let's look into the next one so six period symptoms that can be effectively treated using elix and actually the approach here is the exact same uh, compared to the last one so it's an interesting example the last one also had six examples and uh, like six angles on this one. this uh, probably does a better job in uh, getting people aligned with what's coming here so the headline is right around here and there's a little bit of an explanation here already so you have an understanding of uh, what's about to come then you have uh, some social proof to perhaps motivate people to read a little bit further so so far so good so here on this uh, example they do explain what's causing this symptom and then how it can be alleviated i think this will probably be the theme of the page so there's uh, this theme on cramps bleeding and here they also talk about the remedy already so okay this is what they want them to do at the end of it so take the test and it's very subtle you don't see too much call to action here it is here though like but we missed it on our first round and that's ideal that's, uh, they shouldn't get uh, too noticeable before you've actually had uh, some suspense built up for it okay so a lot of uh, same here and they do randomly drop testimonials here and this uh, seems to completely break the flow and the page you could actually think that the page ends here as uh, it uh, does look at least on desktop quite uh, like the end i'm not a big fan of this because uh, you are breaking the flow of the page and uh, maybe they were more interested in this uh, symptoms and how they can be relieved most likely they did it because they knew that the next one would be a very big one and there's a lot of text here and as a result like they wanted to have something else in the middle all right so let's uh, keep going so some uh, more of the same and then you have the call to action this uh, call to action it's not really that uh, well sold here 
it's just a 10 minute health assessment and this is way get your life back with your personalized formula it basically means that uh, fill this survey for 10 minutes and then we will recommend you some product that you are not aware of and you have no context of it yet so it's a call to action that has a lot of ask in it um, overall this page is fine there's some uh, nothing terribly wrong about it just the, the call to action kind of jumps into it uh, a bit randomly and then on the health assessment you should have at least a little bit of encouragement of uh, what's about to come because you are asking for 10 minutes of uh, things and oh wow well, here's uh, you're asking for a lot more so I would look at this as uh, thinking are all of these fields relevant could this uh, be something that can be breaking into the pieces and already on the first step uh, you are asking them to do a lot of commitment with the phone number before even seeing the form so most likely this will be just a, a funnel that fails on friction so just a, a lot uh, of friction to fill in this survey just the end point and the real benefit is not that well sold this by the way is an important and interesting example of a quiz funnel we have a video coming about those quiz funnels so definitely subscribe to the channel and then uh, you will be alerted when that video comes out next up another funnel seven ways so instead of six we're going for seven you're seeing the pattern here probably and uh, it's uh, going to be very similar of a page than uh, last time so we'll go over it fairly quickly so here it's uh, take the consultation and they are providing some kind of unique formula and that's what they are trying to get uh, people to do here if you think of this in-depth online consultation it's not really aligned with the headline so if you started to look into this like seven ways uh, this is changing your hair care game then in-depth consultation is not really like uh, that attractive and uh, this is nothing to do with that headline etc so it's um, kind of going all over the place one thing you can notice here though is that using something like this is way more justified than on the other funnel because in this kind of case they do get to say that uh, there's a 345,000 of these reviews so obviously it's popular and then you are not standing alone with this product whereas uh, with the others if there's only like uh, three reviews they could be so easily faked and there's uh, definitely a believability issue there so a lot of this is just asking uh, what is uh, valuable I think there here they do make this page very much about them and uh, it's uh, just constantly repeating the brand name and uh, a lot about like uh, we are great we are great we are great and then the call to action at the end of it this looks very much like uh, a footer a link just like uh, we have been conditioned to ignore these email sign up links for example from the footer and not particularly great in really focusing on this particular call to action and if they don't do this then it's just a blog post and you have no way of really getting them back except some like expensive remarketing but uh, if they were like curious enough they probably would have gone to it already so basically you have this option of going through expensive remarketing or getting uh, them uh, just leaving abandoning them one way rule of thumb to spot uh, bad copy that's just they're talking constantly about we 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 us 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 and uh, then just uh, get that um this funnel does a better job in uh, terms of this you have uh, a little bit of a success bar here so you can feel this progression you see what's coming and then one where you also have this why we ask thing so why is this relevant and then like, it's uh, more justified okay i can feel it because it's explained and the last example is about books so here's a book club and they have multiple different landing pages so i'm going to show you a couple and this is a good example because this is obviously working to some degree because otherwise they wouldn't have created so many of them and uh, here we have uh, example so five ways of something so reading with austin cleon can free your creative mind there's a, a subheading here of reading like an artist and then here five reasons to join uh, this particular thing there's a subheading here about this so it uh, fits into this design and they just use different copy different images to go over this so you can have a little bit of uh, biography here then same thing here and then you go into the pointers so one two three four five 
what's uh, the main thing? Reading Brit Dragon stories, seeing from new perspectives, so that's the main benefit. Reading outside the box here, and join intriguing conversations. So each one has like slightly their different uh, angles here, and trying to target this in a way that uh, fits the author. So that's uh, how they have done it. And then at the end, you have similar call to actions. So same people, same footers, etc. So it's an example of how these kinds of pages can be duplicated across your portfolio of products. And if you have something that works, then you can very cheaply and easily duplicate that over to the other ones. And that way you have multiple pre-sale pages to go with. So that is it. Very simple funnels and obviously effective, even though not many of them were too great. There's like multiple things that could have been better, but people are still trying this and running these funnels. So we do see that they work, otherwise marketers would not be using them. And here you can definitely try them out. If you have, for example, your own consultation quiz or simply you want to have people arrive to the product page with a bit more of a context of what this particular thing is about. And here it's a very simple thing to test. You have a lot of landing page builders in Shopify that uh, you can run these kinds of things through and get uh, going. So I would urge everyone to at least give it some serious thought if you want to engage into this one. It is one where typically the copy will make the difference. It's not really about the page layouts or these kinds of design things, fairly simple. The product page does the rest. So you just uh, try to find your angles and go after the right kind of audience with uh, these angles. All right, thank you very much for watching. Um, obviously, likes and thumbs ups are not only expected, but also appreciated. Very much thank you for that. And if you would like more help with, uh, or help in general, with your conversion rate optimization, perhaps looking into pre-sale pages, you can always go to zerogurus.com. We are the original conversion rate optimization gurus. Been doing this since uh, 2015. So we've seen a lot and uh, can very likely help you if you are already having a store that would be of interest to us. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.